CBD Unlimited was founded in 2014 with the belief that CBD can unlock a new frontier in natural healing. And now the company has launched some new products and also expanded into international markets. So explain more about uh, where the company is headed is the CEO, Todd Davis. So great to have you here. So good to be here. Thanks. So give me a little history. Uh, you started in 2014. Right. Like how did you start? What's your background? Well, my background kind of leads into how we started. I was an investment banker in the biotech space all through the 90s. And I just, I really got to see a lot of failure, a lot of success, what worked, what didn't work. And as I moved into the private sector, uh, I started investing in biotech firms. This was a company that was a biotech firm years ago. So <clears throat> we originally came into the space as a, uh, a service provider in compliance and tracking systems. And the one thing we noticed more than anything was this one thing that everybody was talking about was CBD, mm -hmm. but they didn't know how to talk about it. They didn't know how to talk about how to use it, how it works in the body. So we set out in 2014 at the onset of the hemp pilot program, and I recruited doctors, doctors that I'd worked with historically. We set up some really base case studies with patients that had diabetic neuropathy, that had burning sensation, tingling sensation, something nerve related that was causing them an issue. And as we tested in vaping and oil tinctures and capsules and, and topical formulations, what we were really trying to figure out was dosing. Mm. By figuring out dosing and finding out a therapeutic value with this, we learned a lot about the molecule and what it was doing to the person or the patient. And what we saw, they were extraordinary events. But the measurables were people had less pain, they were having a reduction in whatever their symptom was, they were sleeping better, and they were, uh, they were living a healthier lifestyle. Their quality of life was improving, their mobility was coming back. There was a lot of these very apparent issues. Huh. That's how we came into it. And once we saw those mm -hmm. results, then we said, all right, this is the real deal. Mm -hmm. Now let's figure out what to do from now. Okay. So we took that base science, we built on top of that base science. When we, once we found our baseline mm -hmm. therapeutic values, and we built all of our product platform on top of that base science. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that is how you designed your products. So, so what did you take with that science? Then what kind of products do you have? How did you use that science to create those? We have a, we have a specific range tincture formulation. So a baseline way to find out if CBD works for you is to use the oil drops. Okay. And at the right level, it doesn't take a lot. It takes three to five milligrams, six milligrams tops per oral dose. And you can find out how your body reacts to the, to the, to the molecule. The second thing is we made capsule formulations, and we found that if you bypass the stomach and get into the small intestine, it's a better release platform. There's a higher absorption rate. We also marry it with other natural herbs and adaptogen uh, type properties that allow the product to perform better in the system overall. So we're not just applying CBD to the body. We're taking turmeric and ginger and ashwagandha, okay. other viable uh, plant properties that work really well, well and in sync with CBD. Interesting. Okay. And you have some new products too. Yeah. What all do you offer? So the number one line right now is topicals. Mm. Topicals last year in 2018 when we went legal in the hemp industry essentially, Mm -hmm. the, the big box stores, the, the major buyers in the United States wanted to be in this market desperately, but they didn't want to go internal. Mm. So topicals have been the big story for the last 18 months or so in the market. Our, our products, Balmex and Mistex, Maggie's Mist and Maggie's Balm, are, are two, our four primary lines of topicals that at the point of pain or at the point of discomfort, you apply the product and you get a, a value from that. Okay. So those have sold widely. Those are widely available in the United States. They're starting to get exported into other countries that have legal jurisdictions for hemp-related products. Yeah. And it's a very fast-growing sector of that market. So you just led into my next question. Yeah. Where can you buy these products? <laughs> so the, the, it's, it's available. We have right now, we're in about 5,600 stores nationwide. It's expanding quickly. We have a target to get into over 20,000 stores this And are year. these just like retail, like, like drug stores or? The original people were mom and pops. The early adopters were single stores, double store entities, uh, health and wellness centers, mm -hmm. doctors, veterinarians that were doing their research, they were curious, and they were getting demand from their consumers. Now we're in big box stores. One of our, our primary partners is Walgreens. Um, they've taken a prudent, very conservative approach to the market, and I believe they're going to expand out and probably double the size of that this year. Mm -hmm. 
And perhaps some international as well? International, yeah. We're, we're, we're in talks. From a compliance standpoint, you have to go to the government to make sure that it's a legal process. Okay. So we're pursuing markets in Puerto Rico and some of the U.S. territories, Guam, mm -hmm. Hawaii, so kind of that, that belt in there. Mm -hmm. We're in South Africa, we're in Jamaica, and we're uh, seeking approvals in a couple Asian countries that are very keen on this product. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, you know, I've heard, of course, CBD had huge growth, a little bit of a tough year in 2019. I mean, where do you see growth from here? And what are kind of some of the hurdles in the industry for this is mainstream? Well, really I, I, to address what happened last year is everybody's race to the market created a glut. There was oversupply when it came to the farmers. Mm -hmm. There weren't enough mass producers to consume that supply. And you have a whole bunch of very fragmented small startup companies vying for the same space. I think in 2020 is kind of going to be the, the shakeout year. Okay. You're either going to be a really good company or you're going to fail out because you either overspend, over leveraged, o overbought, overpromised. We're in a position now, being six years in the business now, we've scaled our infrastructure, we've scaled our human resources, and we're taking on market partners that we can accommodate, deliver, and, and work with going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so anything else you want to tell me about uh, how CBD Unlimited is doing for the future? Well, we're, we're, you know, we're on a compound rate right now where last year we doubled our revenues again in that first year of the pilot program. <clears throat> we're expecting actually a, a very steep growth curve now at 5, 000, per 5,000 stores that we add, it starts to compound as it pulls through the market. We're shooting for 20,000, then 50,000 stores, and now we're expanding aggressively our e-commerce platform, our social media um, enterprises, and we're looking for acquisitions in the market that will complement the high quality, the science and compliance aspects of our, of our products and really help be one of the leading distributors in the United States. And are you looking for some guidance too from the FDA? I mean, in terms of quality control or something to kind of help the industry get a little more or organized and... We are, I mean, everybody's kind of, that's the 800 pound gorilla sitting in the room right now. Nobody knows how to address that. Mm -hmm. They need to decouple it. They need to deschedule the, mo the individual molecules away from the FDA's schedule one listing. Okay. We think that Congress has got this right. You know, they're putting this in the hands of the USDA, the agricultural world, and they're moving it out as a food, an additive, a supplement, because there's a lot of molecules that can come out of that plant that can be viable and create enterprise. I think weights and measures is a good place to start. How much can you put max, and what's the minimum you can put, and still claim that you're a CBD manufacturer or, or provider? Okay. Give us that. Give us something to comply to, and I think the market will flourish yeah. under that compliance. Okay. Well, it's all very interesting yeah. to watch this industry, and it seems like it's got a lot of potential. So <laughs> When you see your grandma feeling better, or yeah. you see your my you know, mom, mothers with kids that's doing right. great with no, it. No, my mom's it's, in her 80s. It touches and it's everybody. And CBD after a knee surgery, so and she, she felt some benefit from it. So One of my favorite stories, we can end on this. Yeah. My grandma was, uh, her hands were very tied up, and when we first started testing, we gave her some CBD oil, and her hands started to loosen up with her arthritis. She went from not being able to crochet to doing three blankets before Christmas in a wow. few months. And that quality of life, that one little thing yeah. changes everything. And just the mental change that yeah. can happen along with it. So thank you so much, Todd, yeah, for coming. Best pleasure. of luck to you. And thank you as well for joining us. We'll be back.